Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video in continuation of the leukemia series will be on chronic myeloid leukemia. Let's get started. Chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic myelogenous leukemia is a clonal bone marrow stem cell disorder in which there is proliferation of mature granulocytes like neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils and the precursors. It's a type of myeloproliferative neoplasm associated with a characteristic chromosomal translocation, translocation 9 is to 22, also known as Philadelphia chromosome. Because of this translocation, there is formation of BCR ABL fusion gene. This gene causes the cell to make too much of a protein called tyrosine kinase, which inhibits apoptosis and activates mitotic activity, causing leukemic cells to grow and multiply. CML is more common in males than in females. It is more commonly in the elderly with a median age at diagnosis of 65 years and exposure to ionizing radiation is also a risk factor. Coming to the symptoms and signs. Most of the patients are asymptomatic and are diagnosed during their chronic stage of the disease. In this, they are mainly diagnosed incidentally when there is elevated total leukocyte count on routine CBCs done. Patient can also present with splenomegaly, left upper quadrant pain, fever and night sweats, and unexplained bleeding or pathache. CML is often divided into three phases based on the clinical characteristics and the laboratory findings. These three phases are chronic, accelerated, and blast rises phase. In the absence of intervention, CML typically begins in the chronic phase and over the course of several years progress to an accelerated phase and ultimate to a blast crisis. The blast crisis is the terminal phase of CML and clinically behaves like an acute leukemia. Coming to the diagnostic workup of chronic myelogenous leukemia. In chronic phase, there is presence of leukocytosis and the TLC is usually more than 1000 into 10 to the power 9 per liter. There is a presence of less than 5% blast in the bone marrow and BCR ABL1 positivity is noted on cytogenetic or molecular study. However, it does not meet any of the following diagnostic criteria of accelerated or blast phase. In accelerated phase, it is defined by the presence of one or more than one of the following criteria, which are 10 to 19% of blast in the blood or bone marrow, persistent or increasing WBC count more than 10 into 10 to the power 9 per liter unresponsive to therapy, persistent platelet count more than 1000 into 10 to the power 9 per liter unresponsive to therapy, persistent platelet count less than 100 into 10 to the power 9 per liter unrelated to therapy, more than or equal to 20% blast in the blood, persistent or increasing splenomegaly, unresponsive to therapy, presence of additional clonal chromosomal abnormalities in Philadelphia chromosome positive cells at diagnosis, which may include a second Philadelphia chromosome, trisomy 8, isochromosome 17q, trisomy 19, any complex karyotype, or abnormalities of 3Q26.2. Also, large clusters or sheets of small abnormal megakaryocytes associated with marked reticulin or collagen fibrosis may be considered presumptive evidence of accelerated phase, although these findings are usually associated with one or more of the criteria listed above. The diagnosis of blast phase is done by the presence of 20% or more than 20% blast in the marrow or blood or the presence of an extramedullary proliferation of blast. Approximately 70% of the blast are of myeloid CDs and 30% are of lymphoid CDs. Well, the total leukocyte count can be also elevated highly in leukemoid reactions. So it is very important to differentiate CML with leukemoid reaction. Few of the points I have enumerated here in this table, for example, CML is more commonly in adults. However, leukemoid reaction can occur at any age. The total leukocyte count is high in both the cases, but in leukemoid reaction, it is usually less than 1 lakh per microliter. However, in CML, it is usually more than that. For the differential leukocyte count, mainly myelocytes, metamyelocytes are noted in CML. However, in leukemoid reaction, there is a predominance of band cells. Morphologically, the neutrophils 
in CML are generally hypogranular. However, in leukemoid reaction, there is presence of toxic granulation in the neutrophils. The splenomegaly is invariably present in CML. However, in leukemoid reaction, it may or may not be present. The NAP score is low in CML. However, it is high in leukemoid reaction. There is presence of BC or ABL1 fusion gene in CML and absence in leukemoid reaction. The onset of CML is chronic. However, leukemoid reaction can have an acute onset. Coming to the treatment part of CML. Well, the CML treatment is mainly targeted therapy with a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, mainly imatinib mesylate. Other options are other forms of chemotherapy, immunotherapy and high-dose chemotherapy with stem cell transplant. I hope the leukemia series videos are helpful for making you understand the concepts of leukemias. The last in this series will be on chronic lymphocytic leukemia, so stay tuned. Also do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are liking my videos. Thank you.